What's up, YouTube? Georgia Silver Hunter back, and today we'll be doing a $1,000 half dollar hunt. Now, I picked up these two boxes from my local Fifth Third. I get two boxes from them just about every other week, and uh, we uh, got them open at the bank like we always do, and we were a little bit surprised. So let's take a look. Box number one looks very much like boxes we've been getting lately. Lots of 2023 enders followed by a bunch of clad. I checked, didn't see any silver enders, no proofs, no other NIFCs, just a lot of 2023s. But box number two, when I opened it, I was a little bit surprised. We got met with an entire box full of NF string and sun rolls and one lonely Brinks box. So this looks like maybe, um, I don't know, Brinks got some rolls from somebody else and they managed to hand stuff the box and tape it shut because these are from another armored car company in a Brinks box. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this one first because this looks like most of the boxes we've been doing lately, especially like the ones we did on our live stream the other night that was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll do this one last and hopefully we'll get lucky and find something interesting. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into these rolls and see if we get lucky and find something expensive or something rare. So you may hear my 3D printer banging away in the background. I'm actually printing out a Darth Vader uh, like pen mug or something, you know, something you could drop pens in. Um, so if that gets done by the time I finish this video, I'll be sure to show you guys how it turned out. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and open one or two rolls and look through them like we did the other night on the live stream. I'm going to change things up a little bit here today. All the super shiny ones so far, 2021 Philly, and then some 2023 Denvers. So nothing too special there. Uh, we are going to be checking any 2023 Phillies that we come across for that new DDR. We did find one of those the other night, and that went to Hunting Southwest Ohio. We gave away free rolls on the stream, mainly to our members, because they uh, I did a little uh, wheel where they would each get a certain allotment of rolls, and they managed to eat up most of the rolls from the members drawing. So we didn't get to give them away or at least too many away to people in the stream. Uh, so if you're new to coin roll hunting, you're wondering what the heck we're doing here. We have picked up rolls from the bank. We're opening them up. We're going through them. Like I said in the intro, and we're looking for anything that might be valuable or, or interesting um, or a mint error variety. So there are certain coins we're going to be on the lookout for. That 72 is one of them. I do have a document in the description down below this video that has everything that we'll be looking for in half dollars. That document also has pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. So if you're uh, new to looking through your change and you want to know what's interesting you should be looking for, while it doesn't have pictures, it does tell you the interesting dates that might have something on them. And uh, there's a great resource that I use called the, the uh, what is it called? Not the Cherry Picker's Guide. I do have that, but uh, it's the Pocket Change book. I've just forgotten the name of it. It's in the description in the link down below. It's a fantastic book, though. If I remember, we'll put it on screen before the end of the video. So far, not seeing too much. This will be the last roll we do on camera. Then I'll go off camera and bring you in as we find things. But uh, so far, this is looking like most of our boxes of late. There's another 2021. Seventy-two with an FG bicentennial. Don't care. Seventy-one Philly. All right. Well, I'll go off camera, and uh, hopefully, we'll get to bring you guys in early and often as we get through these rolls. Well, it's not super exciting, but we're through our first 15 rolls, and I just wanted to show you we have found a couple of little minor things. No real value here, but we've got ourselves a 2008 Denver not intended for circulation coin, or NIFC. That just means these coins were produced and mainly distributed by the mint to collectors and not released to the bank. Now, there's, the, there's enough of these floating around. I think at some point the mint probably did release them, or a lot of collectors bought rolls and just dumped them because they realized they weren't too valuable. Um... Came across a 2018 Denver as well. So we've got that one and we're gonna put those up here as fines for the hunt because technically they're not supposed to be in the box which makes them a little bit interesting. And we're gonna keep on hunting, but it's been pretty slow. Lots of 2023 Denvers and lots of just beat up like 70s and 80s half dollars. 
Well, unfortunately, we've reached the end of the box, and I didn't bring you in for all of it, but we did come across a handful of NIFCs. We'll go through them real quick. 2003 Denver, 2005 Denver, 2008 Denver, 2018 Philly, and three 2018 uh, Denvers with somebody's handwriting on here. Not Oh, it's Nubs. Nubs finds treasure. That's, I think, another uh, YouTuber. Actually, I know it's another YouTuber, so pretty cool. Nubs, got one of your coins. So anyway, two, four, six, seven NIFCs on the box, which isn't great. Reminds me very much of the coins we just went through on our last live stream. Let's hope our weirdly mixed NF String and Sun box with our one Brinks roll does a little bit better. So I wasn't going to film opening these rolls because I wasn't too sure what we were going to have. And of course, I get into my one Brinks roll and look at this. About, what is it, three coins in, we ended up with a San Francisco proof. Now it has seen better days. We got ourselves a 1975. Hopefully you guys can make out that S right there. We've got our frosted details, mirrored finish. We know we've got ourselves a proof here, not supposed to be in circulation, which means somebody popped this out of a mint set and spent it. But uh, proof is the coolest thing we found so far, and hopefully we get a little bit more of stuff like this in the rest of this box. So I went ahead and opened rolls two through 10, and that's what I have out here in front of us. And we're on roll number four, about three quarters of the way through. We've got our next find. It's not a great one. It's just another NIFC. 2007 Philly. And for all these NIFCs, I'll be putting the mintages on the screen so you can see they're all fairly low and uh, shouldn't be in circulation. Well, we're getting through rolls 16 through 20, actually stopping you here on roll number 19. And I already have the coin of interest under the scope. We've got ourselves a 1971 Denver with the FS. I believe this is the 102. And there it is right there under the scope. And I'll point it out to you here for those that don't know what the FS-102 is. It is a double die obverse. It presents itself in the letters I and N of In God We Trust. And typically the way to tell you have one is if you have double serifs on the bottom of the eye, which you can see we've got one bottom of an eye here and another bottom of an eye here, and double serifs at the top. So you can see we've got a top of an eye there and a top of an eye there. And you can also see over here in the end, we've got the, the uh, sort of leg of an end here, a little indent and another serif of the end there. Now the FS-101 presents itself in the R, U, S, and T mainly in the word trust. Now I've got a little bit of a, it looks like another T here, but I don't think that is necessarily a double die obverse or an FS-101. But just wanted to point out this is where we would be looking and nothing over here is jumping out at me, at least under this light and this magnification. But uh, still pretty cool find, FS-102. I'll put a picture from Variety Vista or PCGS up on the screen. This is a really nice FS or a really nice 1971D though. I would say this is definitely in that kind of AU state to, to low mint state. Really, really pretty coin. And uh, if I am correct, this could be worth a few bucks. And again, I'll put the price for that up on screen. So I'm just getting into roll 26 through 30. And I just wanted to show you that it doesn't just happen in pennies and nickels and quarters. But here is a half dollar machine rolled from NF String and Sun, where we have been shorted 25 cents. We got ourselves a 1998 quarter. Not in terrible shape, but we did get... Uh, shafted here by a quarter. Still getting through rolls 26 through 30, and we've got our next find. Nothing special, but it is a 2015 Philadelphia NIFC. It's another one for the board. We did find another 2010 along the way, but I didn't bring you in for it because it was kind of beat up and not too special. But we're going to go ahead and throw that one up here and keep on hunting. Well, we've got an empty box, but we're getting through roll number 50, and I think roll 50 saved the best for last. While it's not silver, I've already got it under the scope. Hopefully you can see it there. We've got ourselves a 1973D, and it is the infamous double die obverse, and this one is a fantastic example of a double die if you've never seen one. So I was mentioning in my live stream the other day that especially for new coin roll hunters, you'll hear these things, you might see some pictures, and sometimes you'll spend a lot of time looking at a coin wondering if you have one or not. This is the kind of thing that the second you put it under the scope, you can tell something is just not quite right. So you can see the double T here. You can see two clear S's here. 
The serifs always give away a double die. A machine doubled coin, it'll look like doubling, but there's a very sharp shelf and there's usually only a single serif. But here you can see serifs at the top of the S and the bottom of the S. Same thing with the U up here, right? You can see a very clear delineation of the, um, of the serifs at the top of the U. And I think we can even see, yep, you can see some doubling in the base of the T, the splits here, a little bit of a double leg. This is a really, really strong double die. Now, some of the weaker ones, the easiest way to see the uh, double die is this extra little, you'll see it right here, little mark down here in the middle of the three, but we've got very clear doubling even throughout. But sometimes that's the telltale sign that I usually look for right there. And then it makes me give it a little bit closer look, but this one I didn't have to because this just jumps right out at you. So I'm gonna take you over to the computer. If you're not uh, familiar with PCGS and their price guide and how to look at these coins to determine a value uh, and also to kind of double check your images, uh, we're gonna cover that real quick. All right, well, if you've never been here before, PCGS is one of the premier grading companies out there for coins. Um, if you do comic books, it's like CGC for comic books. Um, but they have a really nice section here called Price Guide, and you can drill in here and get to any type of U.S. currency. And what I do like about their website is it's really well organized and really quite easy to read. Um, we're looking for half dollars here. We've got ourselves Kennedy half dollar, so we're going to drill in there. And uh, earlier in the hunt, we found ourselves a 1971D, and you'll see there's a plus sign next to it. So anywhere you see a plus sign, that usually means there is a recognized variety. And the FS 101, 102, those are just the numbers that they assign to the individual varieties. And off here to the right, you've got the prices, and the, these equate to various grades. So this would be MS 60, I think 40 is an extra fine. And obviously the top uh, grade you can get is 70. And each point can make a pretty big difference on the price of a coin. And the varieties, it adds a lot of value. As you can see, a 1971D and MS63 is worth $9. But if you can find one in an MS63 with that FS101, it can be 60 bucks. Now that is a book price. That is what PCGS says it's worth. Your mileage will vary. You can typically expect to get values a little bit lower or in sometimes significant low, significantly lower if you struggle to find a buyer. But I think it's a good gauge to understand, A, is a coin worth getting graded? And B, how important of a find do you really have? Um, so uh, I said we had the FS-102 a little bit earlier in this hunt. Let's just take a quick look at the 1971 and uh, this takes a second to load the full image, but you can see, and you got to keep this little magnifying glass moving, but you can see the double serifs on the bottom of the N as well as the I. Now, mine was not as severe as this one, which would hurt its value. I do think I have a coin in pretty darn good shape. And as I said, I think we were kind of low AU or sort of AU to maybe low mint state. So we're talking a $32 to $38 coin if it were validated and graded, right? So understand that getting a coin graded these days could easily run you, especially for a variety, $30 to $50. So this isn't the kind of coin I would send off to get graded unless I could get it done for free. Um, I do want to go back. Let's look at that 1973D. And again, here's our plus sign. There's our FS101. Quickly on the price, not quite as valuable as, uh, or maybe right around the same ballpark, but in a 40, it's 22 for the MS60, we're at 50. For the MS63, we're at 70. And uh, I'll put my coin, back, or we'll, we'll get it back under the camera so you can look at it. Our coin is not going to be a mint state. It's too damaged to get there. But I did want to go ahead and show you uh, PCGS, their pictures. And you can see very clearly here that their S looks very much like ours. Even the splits in the T. And down here on the three, you can see that extra little notch down there on the three. Hopefully you guys are seeing that. Um, I'll, I'll keep this from moving for a second so you can maybe uh, take a look. But coming down here to price, I think we're probably more down here kind of in the 25 to 40 range. So maybe a 16 to $20 coin. 
Uh, but I wanted you guys to be aware of this. The other really good site, if you haven't been to before, it's VarietyVista.com, and they have a lot of the same, uh, var actually, they have way more varieties on this website than you'll find on PCGS, and it works very similarly. So we're going to go into Kennedy's, DDO's, and let's just look at the 73D for argument's sake. And you can see here, for one, they ha capture six different double dies, and they give really, really good pictures. Uh, but that FS101... Uh, I didn't even bother looking at, at the uh, Liberty part of it, but uh, when we get into the R, U, S, and T, you can see over here it looks very, very much like the coin we have. The splitting in the T, the double leg in the R, even that little extra notch in the three here and here, and uh, you can see the little three back here. So anyway, I think this is another really good resource if you're not looking at it today. Okay, well, let's take one last look at all of our finds for this, but I, I do want to start with one other thing here. I mentioned at the beginning of the video we were working on a, a Darth Vader cup holder, and he is done. Uh, there's a little bit of markings from taking all the supports off that I need to sand out a little bit, but I thought he came out pretty nice. You can see it's got a little, little cup there to hold your pens and stuff, so he'll probably adorn my desk moving forward. I thought it came out really, really nice. There he is in front view sitting down. Um, you can see a slight different color and uh, striation in the uh, black here. I actually ran out of th this particular PLA that I was using and had to switch to a different brand. And you can see that uh, clearly they lay layers a little bit differently. But overall, I think it came out looking really, really nice. If this is something you're interested in, again, I am offering a print 3D printing as a service. So just reach out to me through email and uh, we can work out a price. But Enjoying printing stuff. There's, of course, all my coin tubes, which you can find in my store at gacoinsandcollectibles.com. And uh, anyway, on to our finds. I'm going to start with the 73 because at the computer, I said I'd give you guys a closer look at the uh, detail of the coin. It's definitely been circulated. We've got some scratches left and right. So that's why I say this is not like a mint state coin. Uh, maybe you could get into the extra fine. Uh, from a details perspective. It's not a bad looking coin at all, but uh, looking at it under the scope one last time, I did see we've got doubling in other places. Obviously we had trust, we had three. Most of the numbering, you can see some additional doubling. Uh, here on the nine, you can see a double nine in there. And on the one in particular, you can see two ones here. We got a one there and a one here. Uh, the uh, in God part looks a little thick, but the doubling is not super obvious. Like right here, maybe a little obvious on the base of the N, but everywhere else it doesn't jump out at you. And on Liberty, there's not a ton of doubling. I mean, you can see a little bit of sliding here. A lot of times I would mistake that for machine doubling. Uh, same here on the L. But uh, overall, I think it's, it's a cool find. I looked on eBay, a coin like this in this condition uh, the last couple of sales have kind of been between $10 and about $15. I could easily see this falling off from there. And if, you know, if you didn't get the right buyer, only getting a couple, three to five bucks for it. But if I were selling it, I would definitely put it in that $10 to $20 range and try to get that for it. And uh, again, our 1971D, uh, this is a much nicer looking coin. I think this is AU, no problem, maybe even a little bit higher. So I didn't look this up on eBay. If I can find some comps, I'll throw them up on the screen. But again, these DDOs can be really tough to sell. And hopefully you can find the right buyer for them and make a few bucks. As for the rest of the finds, which uh, are worth less money for sure, we did get shorted by a quarter. We ended up with a 1998. Uh, the proof started us off there in roll number one, San Francisco clad proof. Um, we did end up with a bunch of NIFCs, a 2002D, a couple of 2007s, a couple of 2010s, and a 2015 Philly. People ask all the time, are these worth a lot of money? And the answer is typically no, unless they're in BU, like bank wrapped rolls, never seen the light of day. You might find somebody to give you a few bucks for them. I have found the most valuable thing you can do with NIFCs is build a full run of them from 2002 to 2020 in the highest quality you can and sell those as an instant collection. So, that's my advice to you guys. That's a question I get all the time. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know anytime I find errors because I've been finding them uh, less and less and less, I get excited by them, even though we can argue about what is their true value without being graded. I just love finding them because the mint screwed up. 
The coins are, are damaged by the mint, and that makes them special to me. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Click that like button if you're new to the channel and you like content like this. Make sure you do click on that subscribe button and then click that little bell and select all so you get notified each and every time I release a new video. I'd really appreciate it. Special shout out to all my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel each and every month. And uh, especially for those of you that joined during our last live stream, we did sort of a members only giveaway. That's what it ultimately turned into. And uh, we did pick up a bunch of new subs. So thank you guys. Your name should be scrolling by on the screen as I say all this. So thanks again. Uh, I was able to this weekend pick up a couple of boxes of nickels and a box of pennies all circulated, which surprised me to death. So look for those later in the week. So with that, you guys take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.